In this screencast, I'm going to consider the reparameterization of curves. And this is a typical question that you might get asked. Reparameterize the following curve with respect to arc length. And you're given a parameterization, r of t, here. And you're told t is in the interval 0 to 4 pi. Hopefully at this point you can realize more or less immediately that this is the parameterization of a helix. And I've sketched the helix over here. It has this orientation. I should note that this sketch is not to scale, that is to say the radius of the cylinder from here in this parameterization is 3, so this distance here is 3, whereas this distance covered along the axis over this parameterization is 4 times 4 pi or 16 pi, so that's a rather large number relative to 3. Nevertheless, this sketch is, is useful in illustrating the curve. Oh, and one more thing I'll need later, let me just put here we have an interval, our interval i is from naught to 4 pi, and let me just indicate the parameterization is this map from the interval to the curve. All right, so to reparameterize, the first thing is to note this is what's given. You're given a parameterization, but it is not with respect to arc length. The first thing you need to do is compute. So you need to compute the length s the arc length s corresponding to any t in this interval 0 to 4 pi. That is to say, the integral from a, which is 0, up to arbitrary point t of the modulus of r prime of tau d tau. So we need to work out the, the modulus of the derivative. I'll do that very quickly since you should be able to do this easily at this point. I'll just do it all at once, r prime and a point let's call it t here, will be equal to, derivative of this is 4 squared is 16 plus 9 cosine squared t, plus the derivative of this is minus 3 sine, so that's 9 sine squared t to the 1 half, and that's simply equal to 5. So this integral is easy in this case, that's simply the integral from naught to t of 5 d tau, who I, is equal to 5t. All right, so then the next step is you have to, this is s in terms of t, you need to invert that expression. In this case, it's easy. What you need is t is L inverse of s. That's the formal statement. In this case, let's just think of it this way. We have s is equal to 5t, so inverting gives t is equal to s over 5. Then the final step is to substitute s in terms of t into this to give us our arc length parameterization. And I'll have to go to a new page to do that. So the final step is substitute, that is to say, our parameterization by arc length, which I'll write as arc of s, is given by our original parameterization, where we substitute in for t s over 5. I'll do it this way. Where we substitute this inverse function, which in this case is simply s over 5. And let's see if I can squeeze it in here. That will be equal to, now you'll have to go back and look, I can see it. It's, that will give us 4s over 5, 3 sine s over 5, 3 cosine of s over 5. And then just to complete this, we should state what the interval of s is, and s will be an element of, well, you have to look to see um, when t is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, and when t is 4 pi, 5 times 4 pi is 20 pi, so this interval is from naught to 20 pi. All right, so this expression, together with the interval, is the reparameterization of the curve by arc length. So let me just, uh, in fact, make that completely clear and grab it. Right, so this then is our answer. And I just want to emphasize graphically, let me see if I can squeeze it in here. I kind of need to move this. Let me just move this out of the way. We don't really, I should just delete it. Let me just delete it. Hopefully I won't regret that. So this is our original parameterization. We have now constructed, it's down off the bottom of the page, a new parameterization over a different interval not 20 pi, and it's a parameterization. I hope you can see that. 
such that we use s for this parameter. So now it's the case that if you choose any s in this interval and use the parameterization given below, you look at the map and that will take you to a point exactly a distance s along the curve from its starting point. For example, if we look at the point at the value of s equal 1, it's probably not exactly where 1 is on this, but nevertheless, if I look at the, 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 the s equal 1 and look where it goes, well, you can evaluate uh, simply your parameterization at s equal 1. So I'm not exactly sure where the point is. It's going to be not very far along the curve here, and it's going to be at the point 3 fifths, 3 sine of 1 fifth, 3 cosine of 1 fifth. It's probably not very clear. So that corresponds to a point on here, and that will be exactly a distance, an arc length of 1 from the beginning of this curve. And one final thing I want to say about this is that always with an arc length parameterization, you can check. Let me do that in, in orange also. You can, you can and probably always should just verify that it is an arc length parameterization. And you'll know this because if you differentiate an arc length parameterization, with respect to arc length s, and look at that modulus, you'd better get 1. And so I won't go through all this, but well, maybe I will a little bit. So you differentiate, you get 4 fifths squared plus 3 fifths squared sine squared, 3 fifths squared cosine squared to the 1 half, which indeed is equal to 1. So there you go. So that's a typical problem in reparameterizing a curve by arc length. It's always the same set of steps. You're given a parameterization. You have to compute this. The hard part is inverting. In this case, inverting was easy. We simply take the reciprocal, and then you substitute back in to get your parameterization in terms of arc length. As a rule, I would say you should always just check that you have an arc length parameterization by differentiating the resulting expression and verify that the modulus is always 1. And that's my first example on reparameterizing by arc length.